Can you please celebrate God by giving a good clap of food to the choir? One more round of applause. Give the choir a good clap of food. You will not be seated. God bless you. I don't know who knows where Emmanuel's wife can be found. Comfort. We have decided to give. Well, Emmanuel used to serve this ministry in our works department. He has passed on to eternity, but last yesterday we decided to give his first daughter scholarship through university education. And the mother should come tomorrow and collect every money she will need for that scholarship. It, the way I clap you are not happy you have said that. I want the young man who led in worship to step out and the best dancer. There was a man who was dancing very, very well here. He wore uh, glasses. Uh, Pastor Joe, can you find, what is the man? Somebody find him, bring him. Uh, somebody give to about 20,000 for being the best we have. Come, come, come. Hey, give them brand new notes. It is not always that you find a man who can dance very well. And uh, I hope you don't run away. The last man we celebrated just stayed away from dancing. I hear he's hiding over there. I don't know whether you know when people dance, they bring down the glory. And that you don't know how to dance. There are people who don't know how to dance who irritate and grieve God. If you don't know how to dance, Get glued to your seats. I don't know what you did today. I'm sure Mr. I prayed very well. Your songs were greatly anointed. You know, only we who have water in us will know the color of the sea. <laughs> In my days as a young soul leader, we used to fast the whole day to lead only in 10 minutes worship service. But now people eat and they come here and waste our time. Give them one more clap of somebody. Amen. If you were joined in this hall, If your mar marriage ceremony was conducted here, I want to have dinner with you and your wife to receive accounts as to how you treat your spouse. If you are afraid of that report, if you stay back, I'll look for you. I will pay for the dinner, but you give me account. I want to see how good you are as a husband, as a wife. From the very inception of this hall, anybody that will have conducted his or her wedding here, uh, give your name to Pastor Joe, we shall confide in you where the dinner will hold. It will be a secret uh, venue. It is not for all. All, the, all those who are bachelors, just stay away. 
If you are married outside here, stay away. How many of you like that kind of dinner to hold? For us to have the people give accounts. Once you wait here, you must be a good husband. You must be a good wife also. You didn't say amen to that. So see Pastor Joe, and we shall soon announce where the dinner will hold. I'm going to ask you to increase your prayer for me by what happened last Sunday and Monday. I have not been asked to mentor six of the governors from the East. Well, it's a big, it's a big burden. But I know with your prayer support, we shall play that role beautifully well. Amen. Amen. Every king needs a priest. Every king needs a prophet. And we've been asked by God, not only by men. It's amazing. I did not plan it. I did not even think of it. Just worked out. That shows that God has great respect in what we're doing here. What more time? Let's give the Lord a good clap of it. Everyone who has served in our Miracle Convention Committee at any level of responsibility. Tomorrow we want to meet with you and we shall, we shall uh, receive you as a member of our Council of Elders uh, who will be in charge of all that we shall do in this place and particularly all that we shall do during the forthcoming crusade. So if you have served before and those who have even nominated to serve in this coming miracle convention, we want you to meet with us and we'll pray for you and you become a member of our Council of Elders. Can we give them a good clap of everybody? <laughs> Choir, we... Choir, we have a we have a, a desire, a plan to get a carpenter who will build a stage for you during the miracle convention. But you know, that means you have to learn how to dress to sit on a high stage. You don't, you don't come there with your your blouse. I mean your skirt ending at your waist. You should sit with great dignity and should dress well. Don't don't frighten us by dressing poorly. Uh, do you agree with me? Yeah. When you walk up this look like an assistant pastor. By I think tomorrow. We're going to invite carpenters to dream and think and plan on how to build a state very high that everyone in that crowd shall see you and maybe pray for you and celebrate you and honor you. Amen. Osama, there were 52 who came on time last week today, only 46 came on time. A back town, there were 48 today, there are only 48, no growth. On one road, they have just had the new election. There were 40 who came on time today, there are 29. The new leaders take note or will sack you. Barracks Road, there were 10 today, there are 16. There were housing estate, there were 20, 42 today, there are 17. I call it Penel. Okay, this is not uh, sorry. I mean, this is equal to Penel Road. There were 66 last week. Today, there are 80 who came on time. 
It was a poor town. There were 23, only 12 came on time today. Whenever there were 53, only 40 came on time. All around town, there were 56, only 46. At back time, there were 15, only 20. Okay, 15 now. Today, there are 22. I can't wait. There were 45 to the only 35 come on time. It didn't rain. Why are people so? Why did we come so late? Children, there were 186. Today, there are 205. Well, I'm sure the children would like to hear and know that we have added more, more money to the building project of the hall. And it will soon be ready. You know you. There were six who came on time last week. Today there are ten. Newcomers, there were 16 last week. Today only 14. It's in Udon. 22 of them came today for the first time. In the local government, there were 15 last week, today there are 30 in number. The winning, the winning zone is in the town. All those from the can you stand up, stand up, and let's give them a good winners, champions, clap up for everybody. Can we clap better for them? God bless you. Be seated. These are the officers that will serve in this year's Miracle Convention. If you have served before, you are among those we are expecting tomorrow. We shall pray for you and anoint you tomorrow. Because this year's program, in fact, one of the leaders of of service will be an army general who will be coming all the way from Abuja, the commander of the division. So this year's program is going to be out of this world. You're not excited. Elder Engineer Bide took with chairman the program this year. Uh, architect uh, Ben Tone will assist him. Barrister Mrs. Anene will be the secretary. Dr. Mrs. Inyang will be the assistant secretary. Uh, our elder and leader, Dr. Oyanga, will remain the financial chairman. Sister Karo Emecheta will be a member. But we have to, what are you people? We have to include the bossa, the accountant. Please include her. Barista Nema Etuk will be in charge of the transportation, followed by Elder Godwin Obot, Elder Rafael Mwabuko, Elder Mrs. Joyce Etuk will be in charge of the welfare. And all welfare members will expect you to be at the meeting tomorrow. We'll decide whether to cook for visitors or not to cook. How many of you like us to cook? Don't raise your hand unless you're willing to cook yourself. I can see your hands waiting to eat. We're looking for those who will cook and serve others. If we don't have enough number, we'll cancel it. S uh, Sister Udobia, um, Nene Udobia, will be in charge of our honoring committee, assisted by Doris Usen and Brother Mfon Apakman. A commission will be Brother Ini Akwao, followed by Margaret, assisted by Margaret Opadio. Our sister Udebe Umarin, who is in the choir, will assist them. Brother Charles Ajike, 
But uh, if we can happen, Honorable Ben, it is Ben's. Um, Sister Messimba, Pastor Okpara. Pastor Okpara will be in charge of the. Uh, Pastor Okpara has been promoted to be in charge of training of our zonal leaders, plus additional responsibility of being in charge of a prayer band. But he's no longer a zonal leader. We are giving him higher responsibility. You know, his son was the leading son for almost five years. So he do for promotion. Pastor Paul Ekereke, all the zonal leaders, uh, Festus Ozoba will be in charge of our protocol. Pastor Daniel George will assist him. Pastor Karis Sinoban will be in charge of the pastor's conference assisted by Dr. Apadio. If I have not mentioned your name and you have said before in any of our medical convention programs, please, you are included as a member of our Council of Elders. This year, we have a dream to bring you to a halt for good eight days. And that road up there shall be blocked. We don't care what our enemies will do. Can somebody shout hallelujah? We have, uh, how many of you do we have? Well, eh? Reverend Ketchup and his wife, they're here. Can we hear you? Can we hear you shout hallelujah? Give the microphone. Then we'll have a... Um, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. We have uh, Bishop Moses Umo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All other visitors are welcome in Jesus' name. Are we ready? Let us stand up and say to God, You are the mind. Wait. When we sing this song, I want you to focus on the omnipotence of God. Stop looking up and down. Let your focus be on He whose power has no measure, whose power has no comparison. Our business in this hall is with Him, not with anybody else. There's not anybody who can do for you except Him whose presence can mock and shall mock and will mock anything that mocks you. Let's say to him, You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The boy and the girl, the boy, I can't wait. I 
Can the happiest person shout hallelujah? What is uh, the what is that is that? 16th of September we are going to bring will to stand still. A pastor brought me how many names you remember? About ten names of women in his church who were all barren. And amazingly, after praying for those women, his own wife, who had been barren for how many years? Twenty-five years, gave conceived and gave birth to twins. <laughs> when you care for others, God will bless you. God did not give Job back what he lost until he began to pray for others. And uh, you know the family, what do you call them again? Dennis Inyan, you all know her. She's bringing musicians from Lagos to storm with fellowship. And uh, <laughs> there are how many bands are they bringing? They are doing about 10 banks. They will turn this place upside down. I shall be a night of song and dance. Those of you who don't know how to dance, begin not to practice how to dance. You can lock yourself up in your room and practice. You don't come here and, and dance like somebody with John Bees. You come here and show the glory of God. I want to announce you'll be you'll be here on that day. Yeah. No matter will stop you. Every plan I've been made to stop is already cancelled. Yeah. I I would like to, I am already excited myself. I want to see ten bands come from Lagos and well I don't know whether our choir is ready for that competition. Because if they beat you, you go with them to Lagos. No, 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 I'm serious. How many of you would like the would like our choir to beat all those ten groups coming from Lagos? I'm excited. I'm excited. It shall be a one fellowship that will sing non-stop. We'll go from song to song, from song to song. When they're through, we will take over and find out who is the master of the game. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 29. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 29. Somebody read to us. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yet yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Go on. And I sought for a man among them. I, I want you to underline that line. I sought for a man amongst them that will that stand. Should make up the that edge. should make up the head that stand in the gap between me and the land. And the land. That I should not destroy it. That, that I should not destroy but it. I Everybody hear me. Every family needs a man. 
that was standing the gap between God and that family. Every village needs a man. I don't know whether it takes only one man in a village to turn the place upside down and change the story of that village. One man. Every nation needs only one man. This night, we are looking for one man. We have been called by God to keep the engine room of the church running. We have been called by God to bring deliverance to all members of churches who are in, cap who are in captivity. We have been called by God to keep evangelism right at the burner, at the front burner. We have been called by God to emphasize evangelism. And it's amazing everywhere we go, people respond in large, in incredible numbers. But this year, this coming month of December, we want to demonstrate what citywide program is, what mass evangelism is. We are going to bring the best among the best to preach and speak to. We are going to bring men with great anointing to place the anointing upon you. And by the time eight speakers have been said to you, you that, that, that door the enemy shut against you will open on its own. As I speak now, we are looking for men Men who will carry the burden of this program, men who will walk, men who will give God the best they have. We are looking for men that believe in the wonders of soul winning. I did teach three weeks ago that in soul winning, number one, God says He will bless you all around. And every one of us here must know that promotion does not come from the east or from the west. It comes from God. The Bible says, favor is life. What does that mean? It is God's favor that determines how far you go in life. That you went to school does not guarantee good job. That you even have good job does not guarantee financial success. For the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 10.22 that, that what? The blessings of the Lord make it what rich. Not your salary. Not your contract. It is God that makes a man rich. The same chapter 23 of the book of Exodus, the 25 through 26, God says, if you are into soul winning, can I have water? God says he will, he, will, he will grant you sweatless success. I don't know whether you know there are people who don't know about to succeed. They touch doors and doors will open. Governors will be struggling to see them. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, last week, the other week before the last one, a governor said, hey, come and pay Costa call on me. And I said, I will not come. You are not being performed. Perform first before I visit you. He asked me, okay, can I attend the program you are running? Said, sure, you can come. The one of last uh, Sunday, I didn't ask the governor to come. He called to ask, can I come? And I said, of course, if you sit down and hear the word, come. The others who invite governors and write and write, nobody, responds, nobody replies. Right way, what they say, plan by God to grant you all our success. If you make so winning the greatest task, the supreme task of your life. It costs God his only begotten son. And God wants you to do it. If you move on again, number three, God says he will take sickness away from you. If you are an aggressive, fruitful soul winner. Do you know there is nothing that humiliates a man there's something that destroys a man there's something that ridicules a man that mocks a man madam what are you looking for us out behind you 
look up here. You don't come there and be looking behind. But nothing, there's nothing that makes a man look stupid like sickness. Do you know sickness takes, takes away appetite from you? Hunger from you? They will place food on your table. You don't feel like eating. Sickness takes, stops you from sleeping. You will only go to your bed from one end to the other end. Do you know sickness will take you to the road? Sickness can take away your strength and your energy and your vitality. Sickness can stop you from driving your own car. Somebody will drive you. The most frustrating thing under the sun is to hear the, the doctor say, sorry, you can't go back to your house until you're well. <laughs> and if you die there, they'll take you from the hospital to to where? Mortuary if you're a rich man. To your grave. What put in the mortuary? You will leave the beautiful house behind you. And this God has promised to take away sickness from you if you're willing to make so willing the supreme task of your life. Can you do me a favor? Tell two persons God is waiting and ready to take away sickness from you. Stand up and say, stand up and say, don't sit down. Let's, let's walk to that person who can follow my argument. Let's walk to chapter 23. The 25 through 26 and of the book of Exodus. Say the Lord your God. You say the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the Hold your life. I don't know anything more wonderful than this. I have been preaching from this pulpit for close to 40 something years. I rarely have missed Wednesday meetings. It's amazing. Sometimes I fly into Nigeria from Europe on a Tuesday, speak on Wednesday, and fly back on a Thursday. How God provides the money, the strength, the energy, is a puzzle to me. When you, become, when you make so winning a thing of great value and importance in your life, this God promises to take away sickness from you. Do I have anybody who would like God to take away sickness from you? Wave that hand energetically and, and excitedly in the air. I said to God, take sickness away from me. That includes the sickness that has been killing members of your family. And I want to announce tonight that every demon that has been cutting short the lives of your family members shall tonight be banished. There are many people who do not know how life can be sustained. They don't know how others live long. They don't know how others prosper. All they do is grumble and complain. What did, what did God say again he would do? They shall not even cast their young. That is, we are back to that prayer that nobody that is into so willing. I don't know if you have seen most of the men of God you see on television. Some of them have been there for 80 years. <laughs> One of my friends, the, the president of the club 700, you know, he interviewed me in 1986 in the US. After greater Lego for Christ crusade, he invited me to the US. Men and brethren, I went to his office and to his studio. I called my wife and said, Madam, this man's God is bigger than our own. The food they served me in the hotel he checked me to was about $500 a plate. I was tempted to say, can you keep the food and give me I couldn't believe 
that people from who have reached that level, they, they sent about four cars to bring me from the airport. And I said to God, where is the God of Elijah? Did I sleep? I did not sleep that night. It was like the day, the first day I went to, what do you call it? On my way to Bangladesh, what do you call that my beautiful place? The city before Bangladesh. Uh, Dubai. The day I went to Dubai and saw what they did with their oil money, I began to cry. I called my wife and said, Madam, <laughs> we belong to a nation of idiots. I don't know whether you know when a, a king loses direction, he becomes a slave. How many of you know that a brown man does not see the riches around him? I went. The day I went to Bahrain, I cried also. All the local taxes run free. All the local phone calls, free. Every citizen has his own home given to him by government. <laughs> I asked God, Father, <laughs> why can't you kill all the grown up Nigerians and raise up new ones? You don't understand. To see what others are doing with their riches. But I don't know whether you know that these oil companies from, from, from Europe, they are busy keeping us in captivity. What you call the six sisters. They sponsor our poverty. They sustain our poverty. They make sure we don't rise up. From Angola to Gabon to Cameroon to Central Africa, because of all continents of the world, we are the richest. Congo has the largest deposit of uranium. And the perfect thing that these my friends come from Europe to pick that money and bribe, and bribe people who keep us in captivity and keep us in captivity. If you call uh, Cameroon from Europe, it will first go to France before going to Cameroon. You say later to them to go to France before. They don't want to say in Nigeria, do business. That was the day they arrested every, every businessman that was selling made in Nigeria goods. And the preacher and said to the Christians in Cameroon, you were made poor by God. But we will pay your children's school fees, we will we'll buy your cars, we will we'll pay for your rent. And I said to my friends, it's not true. But Canadians are stupendously rich. And my friend asked me, where, Omar, what is the evidence? Hey, if I raise, if I raise 10 million in 30 million, how much will you give me? He said 20%. No, make it 50. This is business. You know, I rest 20 million in 30 minutes. I was saying to the Prime Minister of Cameroon, how can a Cameroonian be poor? You know what he asked me? And what is that to make us rich? And yet, their soil is so stupendously fertile. You don't have to build uh, heaps to plant yam. Your present to the forum, something we go to that guinea. In the midst of plenty, there is so much lack there, and it is the white man that gives well, that that has forced the cost of alcohol to to be cheap. So they buy tumbo, they drink and they drink, and somebody pay for that tumbo, so they will be drunk and not know how to think. If, if you know the level of corruption in Nigeria, you will likely cry. Because some people are paid to keep us poor and to maintain the poverty. 
But well, see this way. Where there is ignorance, where there is no knowledge, there is bound to be corruption. And yet, our government can send everyone to school, at least to college level. But let's forget about it. Let's worry about us. This God has, is, has a plan to raise you up despite the obstacle and the odds on our way. Yeah. Right where you're sitting tonight, you can become the, 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 become the main man of your family. God is waiting for you. Stop worrying about what others are doing. I don't know whether you know, when David was going to attack Goliath, his brother did not agree. You don't have to wait for the support of other members of your family. Your brothers may look down and you ask, who are you? doesn't matter what they say. If you're ready to be the main man of your family, I am declaring now that the miracle starts now. In there, uh, David's new brother asked him, who do you think you are? Stupid, arrogant, proud boy. We have asked our father to keep you in the forest to take care of the animals. And we don't know how you got here. <laughs> you know what I asked him? He asked him, have I no reason to challenge Goliath? He is defiling the army of the Lord. Why was I keep quiet? This, I don't know how many of you are keeping quiet over the problems in your family. There is something we don't seem to know. God is not preparing you only for heaven. God is preparing you to live a life of extinction here before you go to heaven. Do I have anybody who wants to live a life of extinction here on earth before you go to heaven? Are you sure? They shout hallelujah, let me hear somebody. Yet, if you notice, for the many years we have been running different programs, we have not asked a white man to come here and sponsor our programs. But what they can do in America, we can do it here, here, here. This is why we are having today's service. We intend to bring you to halt. We intend to send out, how many buses did we send last year? A day. How many? How many? Huh? 200. Come on, give the transport committee a good clap of free. <laughs> we are going to send out 400 buses a day. Do you know that is more than 3 million naira a day? We are not afraid of this Goliath. Huh? Because our sling shall carry the right stone to his forehead. <laughs> People say we have business house in Aba. Aba has no road. How can you have a business house there? With sling, with our sling. With our sling, this Goliath shall come down. Says he's looking for a man. Can we run to chapter 17 of the book of First Samuel? Let's see verse 45 and 46. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear. Thou comest with yeah, thou commit against me with a sword. And with a spear. And with a spear. And with a shield. And with a shield. For I come to thee in I the name come of to the thee Lord in of the hosts. name of who? The Lord of hosts. Everybody here they look up and how many of you know the Bible says at the name of Jesus that your sickness shall bow. Your poverty shall bow. The demonic forces against you shall bow. 
every every time thrown at you shall miss his position. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, it doesn't matter who has a knee, it shall bow, it shall bow, it shall bow, it shall bow, it shall bow. Somebody shout hallelujah. said I'm coming with the name of the Lord my brethren we are going to be programmed with the name of the Lord Amen. any white man who will come will be coming as our guest yes, <laughs> the last time they had uh, what do you call this business house madam Joseph business the, the, the brother we brought from US tried to pay for his accommodation from U.S. I asked him, are you crazy? <laughs> he said, no man. Every other place I've gone to in Nigeria, I have always picked my bills. And I said, not here in New York. Not only shall we take care of you, shall take care of a member of your team. And we're going to give you good offering. And the offering will be in dollars, not in Naira. <laughs> The man almost began to cry. I said, why are you crying? He said, nobody had done this for me before. No, you were going to the wrong place. When I come to you, we'll take care of you. We'll pick your bills. We'll give you a friend. Why? I don't know whether you know in heaven, we Africans shall lead in sing song service. No, the white man can't sing in, uh, in our language. They can't sing in Congolese language. They can't sing, they can't sing in our language. My wife is here. I, I thought to teach my friends to sing Kumama, Kumama, Kumama. Yeah, well, Kuma, for two hours, the uh, American could not pronounce Kumama, Kumama, Kumama. <laughs> I, I was asking them, what is difficult in that word, Kumama, Kumama? And they asked me, don't you have another song? Hey, 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 I came with this song, learn it. That means when we shall meet with him who died for us, heaven will ask us, we Africans, to lead and sing song service. We shall go to Efi, to, to, to Ibo, to Yoruba, to Hausa, and we shall dance with the rest of the, of the kingdom. And therefore, we must so run this race that when we show up in heaven, nobody will ignore us. I've said to my wife over and again, when I show up in heaven, if they call for any European, not other than my own, I'll protest in heaven. <laughs> no, because I'm doing what the white men do. We use our money to do our programs in Nigeria. We don't bring any big European to pick up our bill. We pay our bills. And therefore, when we show up in heaven, come on. The whole place will stand up to receive us. <laughs> Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah, somebody? God was looking for a man. And tonight, we're looking for a man. We're looking for... Do, I don't know whether you know, when many people shall have gone, members of the transport committee will still be there looking for those who have no means of transportation. When many people shall have gone home, the welfare committee will be looking for food for visitors who are hungry. Well, we need people who keep the place clean and tidy. We need good people who will be here to pray that nobody that comes will have any kind of accident or crisis, that God will protect everyone as they come and they go. That is what we call bearing, being an armor bearer for this great war. If you cannot clean the floor, you can carry one chair. If you can't carry one chair, you can sing. If you can't sing like Jim Reeves, you can sing like me. But everybody must do something. Because no neutral gear can move a car. The amazing thing was Israel needed only one man. 
not more than two. Just one man who could bring down this Goliath. I don't know whether you know your family, in your village. All that you need is what? One man. Can we see the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 16? It's amazing that when Israel had crisis, they needed not a man but a woman. And one woman. I don't know whether you know that God doesn't anoint a committee, he anoints one man. <laughs> when God wants to bring revival to a village, he will go through one man. Others will not even understand. Others will be asking, what are we doing? Why? Why? No, one man. And this now we're looking for that one man. But God, we are determined to bring the whole of the East to stand still. We shall send vehicles to Portaco, to Abba, to Calabar, to bring people. We shall send vehicles to every local government area in this state. They must hear us. We're going to bring speakers from Abuja, Wari, Lagos, name it. Each one will bring his anointing. We're going to bring musicians. More than 10 bands will come. We are determined to bring the whole place to a standstill. I have made a prophetic pronouncement. It is this. You will be alive to be in that program. No sickness will stop you. But no sickness. No sickness. No financial crisis. No witch. No wizard. No woman born of a normal woman shall stop you. No, shall stop you. No, no, no. no. Can you raise your hand wherever you are and shout hallelujah somebody? Let's hear from Esther. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Jerusalem. And fast ye for me. Neither is not three, three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Number one, everybody hear me. All those who want to do big things for God, you must first be anointed. No man does anything big for God who has not been anointed by God. You know what David said to the king? <laughs> David, okay, was David ever anointed? Let's see the book of 2 Samuel chapter 2 verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 3 So all the elders of Israel came to the king to All Hebron. the elders of Israel came to the king To Hebron To Hebron And King, da and king David made a league with them Yes In Hebron before the Lord Yes And they anointed, they anointed him King over Israel Yes You cannot do great things for God without being anointed And this anointing starts with hunger a craving, a panting and a pining. To say to God, Father, I don't want to do ordinary things. I want to do extraordinary things. You know, David said to King Saul, a bear came and I destroyed that bear. A lion also came and I destroyed that lion. Everyone here must have his own bear. And have his own life. But you must be so sufficiently anointed and empowered by God that your, your bear will die in your hands. Your lion will die in your hands. Don't be afraid of any lion. It's a training ground for you. Everyone here, we are into a training school. You cannot give God a large sum of money ever. Until you have been anointed by God. What does that mean? Anybody who shall be the hand that picks bills in his family, in her family, you must first contemplate where you say to God, I'll give up my food that you may bless me financially. Father, I'll give up my food. I don't know. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. What does it say? 
But thou shalt remember the Lord. Thou remember the Lord. For it is He that it is the He that give the well. See, as we as we pray over come, come those who are going out. I'm still stopping from going out. As we pray over sickness and use power to banish sickness, so you need power to banish poverty. So you need power to banish captivity. Can we go to chapter 42, verse 10 of the book of Job? The, the Bible says, God gave Job twice as much as he lost. Come. That from now henceforth, anybody who goes out should stay outside. That young man going up and down. He cannot sit down. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Right, right where you are this night, you need God to turn your captivity. What does that mean? When we don't have direction as to what to do to reach our appointed place in life, that's what we call captivity. When you are struggling in your finances and you don't know what to do to have enough money to pick your bills, that's what we call captivity. When you desire to marry, you don't have money. That means you don't have direction. It's, it is funny to hear a young man say, I want to marry that sister, but I don't have money. Hey, if you don't have money, wait until God blesses you with money. Marriage is a business of money. No girl wants to suffer because the man is handsome. No. Every girl wants to change her wardrobe and change her shoes and change her necklace and change her bangles and take care of her own people. That girl came out from somewhere. She has father and mother. She wants to be a blessing to them. All these selfish people who marry and forget the parents of their wives, you need deliverance this night. She will cook for you, sweep for you, tidy up your bed. You will not remember her own relations. You need what to call God turning your captivity around. This night I'm going to ask God to turn your captivity around. And what happened again after God turned that captivity around? When he prayed for his friend. When he bothered about others and sought the good of others and began to pray that others may rise up. What does that mean? She, he stayed away from self-pity and stayed away from pity party. There are so many of us who keep worrying. Oh, I, I, I. We, we had, we had uh, our music practice some years ago. One of us who was a staff of the government of Akwaibom State, said because he was not paid his salary, that he will not play an instrument. I begged him and said, Sir, I will not play. And while he was shouting at me, a visitor walked in and asked to know what the problem was. We said this instrument is the master of that instrument. And the visitor said, Sir, I also can play that instrument. The man played the bass guitar and began to play. We began to practice, began to sing, began to dance. Suddenly the man stopped, dropped the guitar, and removed his shoes and removed his right leg. The man said to that brother, I have no leg, but I have a son. He said he, he used to be a bank manager. His merchant came to see him and he tried to escort the, the visitor back to his car. A trailer drove him to where he was and crushed his right leg. He said, I have no labor to have a son. He said, that trailer could have killed me. Why did, why did God spare me? Madam, 
Sit down. Are you an usher? Right where you are this night, my question for you is, what are you doing for the Lord? Are you among those who are using God to achieve your goals? <laughs> a young man came to see me three when I said two days ago. He said, Sir, I have brought you a seed faith of one thousand naira. Tell God to give me six million tomorrow morning. <laughs> there are many people who want only to use God. Can we see the book of Acts chapter 9? Let's see verse 4. What did, what did Paul say to God when he, yes? And he fell to the earth. Yes. And heard a voice sing unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would thou have me to Can we all say that line? Let's read that line together. What will thou have me do? Can we say it, everybody? I don't know whether you yourself, you remember. Your family members who never care about helping you. Once they show up at your door, they're looking for money. One of, one of such of my own relations called me about a few days ago. She said, my doctor said my sickness is very serious to cost a lot of money. And I asked her, like, how much? She said, at least one million naira. What? One million? Have you ever had 5,000 in your own account? She said, I know you can afford it. Just send it quickly. I'll post the number to you. Do you think the next day she will show up, I'll be smiling? I'll be frowning. In fact, I'm frowning in the way that any fly that perches on my face will die. There are people who only use God. Hey, somebody came yesterday and said, said to me, tell God I want to be among the nominees for particular appointments. Can we pray now? Pray, pray, pray. Which state is this? He mentioned the state that I was at. I told him I can call your governor. And I called his governor. He said, ask him. I said, shut up your mouth. Why would I ask him to give you any job? I don't know who you are. I don't know whether you're a crook or a thief. Why do you want to be appointed? He said, uh, I like that post. Let, let's go back to David. First Samuel chapter 17. What would you like? There's 45. Let's go to 46 now. Number one, David felt great intense love for his people. Wait. How many of us here love unbelievers so much that we're willing to do whatever God shall ask us to do that unbelievers may become believers? Hear me. If your own son is not a believer, you are living with a potential criminal in your house. You didn't hear me. One of us, the daughter, the younger daughter was kidnapped. And they wanted 30 million from him. <laughs> he called me. He was so panic stricken. And I said, stop panicking. This God will serve rules everywhere. They will soon look at who arranged for your daughter to be kidnapped and your daughter will soon be released. He said very soon after, somebody called him and asked, why are you panting, crying? It is your first son that brought kidnappers to kidnap your daughter. He led them to where she was sleeping. <laughs> and this is a son that he has sent to school who has graduated. He planned to kidnap his own sister and they promised to give him 10 million naira. I don't know whether you have heard of a brother, I won't tell you which church, a lawyer by, by profession, whose son was doing his last degree program 
in the university. They went to pray. And he found that his son was smoking a book. He was angry, living with anger. And the young man back into the kitchen came out holding a big machet and slaughtered him to pieces and put him in a, a big suitcase. As he was carrying that suitcase, the blood began to drip. People who saw the blood drip stopped him. What? He ran away. The police checked it was that man's body. His own son. What was his sin that he asked the son, why do you still smoke jamba? If you have a son who is not a Christian, you have a potential criminal in your house. Anything can happen. He can steal from you. He can never arrange kidnappers to kidnap you. This is why when people say to me, if evangelism is expensive, I ask them to compare the cost of crime with the cost of evangelism. That man who has been butchered to pieces, is it not more than 20 million, but now he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I was shocked when I heard the boy's mother, the man's wife, asked government to forgive the boy that he was too young when he grows up that he will not do it uh, again. And do you know how old the boy is? He is 22 years old. I don't know whether you know that every believer around you is dangerous. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing an unbeliever cannot do. My, I had one of my patients visit me. Every time he saw my son bring out new pair of shoes, he would say, I, I, I command it by faith. It's not my own. He would take my son's dresses and say, I take these dresses by faith, the name of Jesus. <laughs> when I heard it, I, I was confused. I asked him, what is the difference between stealing and stealing by faith? If you sleep again, you'll be standing. If you know how dangerous an unbeliever can be, do you know an, 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 an unbeliever can put your daughter, a cousin of yours, can put your daughter in the family way? It was here in Uyo, an army officer drove out of his compound and soon forgot, remember, he forgot something. As he drove back, he found his cook on top of his daughter. An army officer, he brought out his service gun and said to the cook, this girl is my daughter. And the young man fainted. He said, you can't die without me laying my hands on you. They poured hot water on him. He said, hey, now I'll beat you, teach you that this girl is my daughter. And he, hey, hey. the man said, don't, don't shout. <laughs> If you were the young man raping an animal officer's daughter and the man shows up, all you say, God, let this ground open. Let me go to heaven now. <laughs> and therefore, we need to run after the lost. In your, in your village, those young men can become Indian hill smokers. They can, they, can, they can kidnap, they can steal, they can kill. They can kill. I came home one day in my village. I was told that young men beat up our chiefs and had them thoroughly beaten for embezzling the village money. You beat up our chiefs? They said, sir, they are thieves. All of them are thieves. I said, okay, I'll give you people a revolving loan. I'll grant a check. Good money. 
you borrow, you pay back. You borrow, you pay back. When I want the money, give it back to me. Do you know they bestow that money within one week? With me, there are also tips. If I sophisticated tips, only, only leading men to Christ can save our world and save our families. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is when you when your brother, when your cousin or brother steals from you, you can't put him away. Maybe five years after the, the wedding, and you meet. Burial, and you meet. Even your mother may send for him. Therefore, we must take this gospel to everyone in our families, to everyone we know. We all, if, how many of you know that only the Holy Spirit can stop a husband from beating his wife? Only the Holy Spirit can say to her, hey, hey, what you do is wrong. When I first got married, I had this agreement with my wife and I spoke to her rudely. I left for a club as a crusade and God said, Oh, ma, go back and apologize to her. Hey, father, in Nigeria, men don't apologize to any wife. And God said, Therefore, my spirit will not go with you. You'll be going alone. No miracle. Pray that there will be safety for you. So, I drove back to you, went to your market, bought a blouse and a skirt for her. She asked, are you back? I thought, you were, madam, just take this gift. And God said, I didn't ask you to buy any gift. I said, go back. Apologize. Father, which is more, more desirable? A blouse, a skirt, and an apology. And God said, we're not talking about what you want, but what I want. Go back. So I returned the second time and she asked me, what is the matter with you? You were here a few minutes ago, you're back again. And I said, my dear, you won't believe this. God wants me to apologize to you. She used one grammar I have not forgotten. She said, all is well. <laughs> you know what all is well means? It means the well, <laughs> I'm used to your rudeness. I asked God, have you heard? And God said, oh man, that's why you're there. Only the Spirit of God can convict a husband of his weakness. Even a wife. There are some women who nag. Oh, they nag. I heard a woman ask her husband, Are you a husband? Husbands, they don't look like you. Poor man. Even our rent have not paid. School fees have not paid. Say the husband. Only God can convict every one of us about our weakness. So we need this gospel everywhere. Can you imagine your own relation planning how to steal from you, how to harm you? It was my own uh, blood brother, step brother, who was plotting how to kill me. In fact, he, he said because he couldn't reach me, he would like to shoot my mother. Somebody, that person asked me if I shoot the reverend's mother, where will I hide? Shoot my mother, person to kill my mother. When I heard it, I went with my police escort and asked him to shoot one of his toes, not the whole leg. Just the man jumped through the window and left our home for many, many, many months. Therefore, it is urgent. That will go with the gospel. Only, only the gospel can make a criminal to change. I, I was in this office. A man walked in and said, Sir, I have been an Amoba for a long time. Since we're here, you are too young to say, like me in labor. Are you in labor? The, the man said to me, Sir, I have killed some of your friends. I am a known arm robber, but I'm here to repent. <sighs> Was I frightened? Yes and no. I said, why, are you, why, why have you come to me? Why not other pastors? He said, I'm looking for somebody with good anointing. I'm tired of my life of sin. 
said after your prayer I'll report myself to the police but before I go I want to make peace with God tell me who else can do that except God he said sir if I remember those have killed you know some of them in fact as he said I stole your friend's car a pastor now God is calling us to stand up and reach it was David's intense love for his people we must love unbelievers can we see the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 what does it say John 3 16 what does it say what that what have you given to show you love those around you who are unbelievers I was driving through my village a man waved at me and said reverend 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 I want to give my life to Christ and I said I'm in a hurry sir when I come back I will lead you to Christ on my return the man had died I wept do I have anybody who played before God this night to be a soul winner anybody let me see your hand raise up before God and say to him I want to be a soul winner but not is more profitable than this the Bible says I'm God so loved the world in my own village in my own clan I have been running after the lost the last, the last 16 years my officers will tell you time and again I will bring elders leaders from my clan and would host them in New York give them food we pray all night for my people and plan how to reach them and I will pay about 34 doctors to come and minister drugs to them those that my prayer could not heal the medicine will heal them it cost me 5 million a year for 16 years now tell me what, what is there another bad thing better than being a soul winner God has promised to take care of you if you can take care of his own his own program let's go back to 23 to start and sister the book of Exodus what did he say he would do for us one he says he will grant us all our success two he said he will take away sickness from us three he, he said you will not die prematurely I don't know if you know what it means to come from a family where people die prematurely if you come from that family, yours could be the next day. Or when God takes it away from your family, you have that assurance of long life. It makes you to plan ahead. <sighs> Read on, sir. What else did he say you do for us? Be I, I don't know uh, how many of you here know the meaning of barrenness. When a woman gets married and has no child, it is it is tragedy. It is not even tragedy but an emergency. The mother in law will ask her, you know, some people are so rude. You hear the mother in law or her husband say to her, You have been killing your children, you have been eating your children. A man said it to, to, to me the other day about his wife. He said, This my wife has been eating our children. I almost slapped the man. How, how does a woman eat her own child? <laughs> he, he says, sir, you don't know this woman. How does she eat the children? Does she fry them or cook them? What, how does she eat them? And he, he sat and said, you don't understand. You who understand, tell me. Can a woman eat her own child? It's not possible. But there is a promise from heaven tonight that you will not be barren. Raise your hand and declare and say, I will not be buried. Say it one more time, somebody. I, I understand that love was more than all of you. I come from a family of buried men. My father was the only child. My grandfather was the only child. My great grandfather was the only child. My father, in an attempt to have children, had to marry about eight wives. 
he didn't know it has nothing to do with many wives. <laughs> when I married my wife, some people used to mock me and ask me, Are you sure she'll have a child? She'll be like your your father's wives. And I began to cry and pray and pant and pine after God. And I said to God, don't allow, don't allow Satan to stop me where he stopped my father. Anybody who joined in that prayer, who will say, Father, don't let Satan stop you where he stopped my father. It's a powerful prayer. We are here to change your story. That is why we are here. That whatever spirit has been persecuting your family shall be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Be arrested. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah to God. I was amused when if I said to my wife, good night, she'll get pregnant. Madame Yude, she'll get pregnant. Madam, how now she'll get pregnant? <laughs> One day she said, look. Old boy, I'm tired of having children. Let your grandchildren give you the rest. <sighs> madam, madam, I am on a return match service. That whatever the enemy has taken from my sisters, it must be returned. Jesus, Edi, you two will call me. And Edi, Edi, there, no boy. Jesus, Jesus said you are to Jesus said to Jesus, Jesus said he ought to welcome me. And yet he had to give him a boy. And yet he had to be young again. Young in a boy, yet he told me. Jesus said he ought to welcome me. And yet he had to give him a boy. Jesus, Jesus said you are to welcome me. When you did you came over. When you did you Jesus said you are to welcome me. When you did you came over. When you did you Jesus. Jesus said he had to wait for me. And yet he had it the move on. And yet he had the young and yet. Young in a noisy eater. Jesus, 
Administration of the government of Ebony states. We we ministered it was done in a small church. But you know when they clap, it is like a, it is like a clap of ten million thunders. Few people, but they were excited Christians. There are people who are no longer excited. It's beginning of backsliding. Can we give a good clap of thanks to the Lord Sunday? Amen. Take your seat. Take your seat. I said David had an intense love for his people. Number two, David had what I call a fervent indignation against the uncircumcised Philistine. How many of us are angry when we hear of the level of criminality and immorality amongst us now? I hear a man was beating his wife and 
the ten month old child fell from the wife's hand and died. Why would a man, it's not an error, my dear, error is something minor. Why would a man beat his wife and beat the woman carrying his own child? We are in the last days. The Bible said there will be a rise in criminality. Next, how many of you know that David felt that the army of Israel had made God to become insulted and compromised in that quarrel. And they wanted to step out and teach and teach this uncircumstance for this time the lessons he needed to learn. Men and brethren, there are people who mock us believers and say we are idiots and say we are stupid, but we need to show them that wisdom and creativity and imagination they belong to us. You have seen when we wrote this program, the way we arrange the stage shows the world we are not ordinary men. And with this our new concept of building a stage for the choir. Wow. If you know a good carpenter who has good money, bring him to us tomorrow. Want to design stage, state of the art stage. Well, let, let me bring, if you allow me, I can, I can go on till tomorrow. It's amazing how that God takes away fatigue from me and tiredness from me. <sighs> Those who came to see me yesterday, there were so many. I was here till late into the night. I didn't even know I woke up this morning strong, but I was sure God woke me up by six. And I was as strong as a bell. Let's, let's rush to chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, then chapter 35, verse 4 and 5, then chapter 25, verse 2 and verse 8, then uh, chapter 10, chapter 8, verse 28, chapter 10, verse, 3, verse 11, verse 23, verse 24, verse 25, verse 26 of the book of Exodus. And I will give these people favor. I'll give them a favor. In the sight of the Egyptians. In the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall, shall come to pass. That when you go, when you go you shall not go raise through. your hand and say, I'll not go through that empty hand to somebody. Shout it one more time. Go on, sir. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that subject in her heart dress of silver and dress of gold. Why will God put money in our hands? Let's go to chapter 35, verse 4 and 5. Let's rush. And Moses spoke. Yes, yeah, say. This is the thing which God has commanded. The offering we take here is not for anybody. It is counted and accounted for. It is God that commands us to give offering. Why? God blesses you that you may bless his kingdom and expand his kingdom. And there is nothing more expensive than evangelism. When we hold one million man crusades outside here, you know we spend between 20 million and 35 million. We give when God said to us, Boko Haram will soon take over the north. Asked her to go there and hold crusades. Amazingly, God gave us enough money to give 200 buses a day to each city. It's expensive. It called God is only begotten son. So God wants to put money in our hand that we may in turn save him and propagate his gospel and expand his kingdom and multiply his kingdom. Read on, sir. Read you with the microphone. Read so we can all hear you. Yes. Take you from among you. Take you from amongst you an offering unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. So it is of a willing heart. Now the Bible says it is not for everyone, but those who have a willing heart. Let him bring. Wait, wait. What does that mean? It means those who are grateful. 
What does that mean? It means money without gratitude means poverty. Beauty without character is ugliness. Politics without principle is foolishness. What does that mean? Let's go down to the book of Psalm 132, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me do five. This clock is not help. It's running. Lord. Lord. Lord remember David. David. And all his afflictions. How he swore, How he swore unto the Lord. Vowed unto and the vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely, saying, Surely, not come into the I will not go into my into the into my tabernacle, tabernacle of my house. Or go up into my bed. Go up into my bed. I will not give sleep. I will not give sleep to my eyes. Or slumber to my, or slumber to my eyes. Until I find out until I find a place of habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. David was saying when I was nobody. God made me somebody. When my father did not see anything kingly in me, God saw it and called me out to be a king. You know, David was anointed in the presence of his own brothers. The father has said, this is all I have. And God said, no, there's one person who is not. If you're here tonight, and your father looks down on you and says you'll be nobody. By my pronouncement tonight, you, you will surprise him. You are going to shock him by your success. But you must be grateful. You must be grateful. Yes, I know your husband is uncaring, but remember, you were praying for your husband. And God gave you one. Ah, I know he's not a very good husband. Ah, that's why he that's why God bless you with that man. That through your own righteousness, the man may become righteous. Stop grumbling. Let's go down. To, let's go back to the word take. The word take means from what God has given you, take an offering. Let's run down to chapter 25, verse 2 and verse 8 because of time. The book of what? 20. Speak unto the children Speak of, unto Israel, of Israel that they may bring an offering, that they bring an offering of every man that giveth of every it man that give it willingly. There's a way you give the offering and God will reject it. I know it is not easy. When God said to me, Man, this year's program, I want you to look for 10 million and put it into it. I have been giving instrumentally. I have been praying that God will bring that money. But it's not easy to bring out 2 million, 4 million, 6 million, 10 million. Because there are many things you can do with that money. You can buy a new car. But God said, no, 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 no. Put it into this program. But God also demands you must do it cheerfully and willingly and excitedly. David showed no sign of anger. David was happy to be used by God. Let's go to chapter 8, verse 28 of the book of Exodus. What does this say? And Pharaoh said, and Pharaoh said I, will let you I will let you go, that he may sacrifice to the Lord your God. Yes. Only he shall not go. Satan hates our commitment to God. Satan so asks, why 1 million? Why 10 million? Why not 5 naira? Satan knows that your commitment to God will determine his commitment to you. What does that mean? When your enemies shall surround you like a mighty army, God will speak from heaven and say to them, you're all in trouble. <laughs> a, a wizard in my village stopped my wife and I and said, every time we witches and wizards from this village try to reach you, we we'll find a wall of fire surrounding you. We want to put out that fire and deal with you. <laughs> My brother, we have no quarrel. Why are you threatening me? He said, I hate you. Well, he has spoken. It's my turn to say something. Seven days from today, at our village market, mean village square, God will compel men to pour petrol on you and set you on fire. No wizard has a right to live near my house. 
Now that you're here, you pay for it. You know what he said in reply? He asked me, who born monkey? Let's wait for a seventh day from now. We know who born monkey. Whether a rat gave birth to a monkey or a goat. On the sixth day, there was rumor, strong rumor that this my friend killed a prominent woman. Her first, her seven sons said, we don't government, we don't want government to play any role. We shall deal with him. And they met him at the village square and put petrol on him and set him on fire. He burnt, he got burnt to ashes. I was say, when people provoke you to anger, can you shut up your mouth? Madam, tell God to close this mouth. But as long as he speaks, I've said something. When you are serving God, he will not, I said the other day, when we quoted the book of Mark 16, 20, when we do what God wants us to do, we shall be working with him. W-A-L-K. We shall also be working with him. W-O-R-K. And if you are working with God, and working with God. And you see somebody harassing you. Would that person go free? No. That makes it too dangerous for any enemy to handle. Raise your hand and say, I am not too dangerous for any enemy to handle. <laughs> to God means God's commitment to you. Let's watch to chapter 10. Let's watch to verse 24, 25, 26. I feel a call unto Moses and, and say, Go ye, go ye serve, the Lord. serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your yes, hands be yes. Go on. Let your little ones also go with you. Yes. And Moses said, and Moses thou, said must give thou must give us sacrifice and burnt offering, and burnt offering that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Yes. Our cattle also shall go with our us. Our cattle also shall go with they us. Shall not and hoof they be shall not and hoof be left behind. Thereof For thereof, see that the beautiful preposition. For thereof must we take and serve the Lord. You serve God with your money. We can sing and dance to tomorrow. If there's no money, we'll not be able to maintain this light. You'll not have a pulpit. You can't even bring an anointed man of God to your altar. God gave us that we may give back to him. And I'm here to ask you to practice it. It will work miracles for you. There was this day God sat me down here in the office and said, Oh man, why can't you help the transport committee by hiring additional buses with your own money, 200,000 naira a week? Four weeks will be 800,000. Don't, don't use the transport committee. Find somebody who can do that for you. Pay that person 200 every week and I'll bless you. What is my big man? Is that correct? Every month I pay out 800,000 for additional buses. That no girl who comes here will go home undignified. That the bus will carry every woman and every girl home. Let each one go back in a dignified manner. And let nobody insult a girl because she came to our program. No, 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 no. Not, not in this fellowship. I know we have lost some people. One elder said to me, that you don't charge money for these buses, I will not be, I will not continue as a member of the fellowship. And I asked him to go and go well. Why? Come. Ask him to stand up. Stand up. You. Stand up. Why would you turn that chain to a bed? We're here because of you. That we're here that you may have your breakthrough and enjoy your freedom. I had even financial freedom. And all you do for me to sleep and nod your head. If you don't stop, you keep standing until we close. Everybody hear me. Nobody wants to know how much you know until he knows how much you care. These sisters are precious to us. I will refuse any of my molesting them. 
And if you molest them, my prayer will chase you into a bad tight corner. Mm. I'm not a pastor. Pastors are very wonderful. My own principle is if you mess up the air while sleeping, I woke you up to perceive the order. It's like any man that is married to one of our daughters and you beat her. Boy, your oh boy, I've got to have mercy. Because I'll give up my dinner for 200 nights that God may punish you. Sit down. God has blessed all that will in turn bless his kingdom. I don't want to, we are so late, I want to summarize. How many people here are willing to give God in four, in how many months do we have from now? This is what, uh, uh, from September, October, how many months? Three months. Do I have up to 10 people who can give God 100,000 Naira between now and November? You can give God 100,000 and give it instrumentally. And whenever you pay, ask for receipts. Payment without receipt leads to corruption. All those who can pledge before God to plant a secret offering of uh, 100,000 Naira. Oh, no, 50,000 Naira a month for three months. Or 100,000 Naira for three months. Or 50,000 Naira in three months. Or 25,000 Naira in three months. Or 20,000 Naira in three months. Don't keep your camera, not now. Can those people stand up and come here because of time? We'll pray for you. But the day will come that we shall spend part of the Wednesday meeting to pray for you. Tonight we are going to pray. All those who want to plant a secret offering, who are saying to God, Father, Bring me to a place of financial success. A place where I'll be the main man of my family, of my village. I plan this seed offering. Same people that shall put back into my hand good measure, President shaking and running over. I, your leader, I have paid 10 million. You can do something yourself. I, I mustn't be the only man that God will bless financially. You must be a candidate. Can you please come quickly? I will count five. If I am not here, I will shut the door against you. From 100,000 Naira, 150,000 Naira, to 25,000, to 20,000, to 10,000. In three months. Hey, don't sit again. Stand up. You can afford it. You can do it. Come out. You are part of this fellowship. This is a giving fellowship. This is a prayer where we give and we give and we give. Can you come quickly? The mighty man in battle. Hey, Shoda. You are the mighty man in battle. Jehovah Nisi. You are the mighty man in battle. Hey, Shoda. You are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. You are the mighty man in battle. Oh, Shoda. You are the mighty man in battle. Jehovah Nisi. You are the mighty man in battle. Oh, Shoda. You are the mighty man in battle. Sorry. Glory to your name. They'll give you papers. When you write the amount you want to give and your name and your phone number, please, the things I've said God will do for people like you, which of them do you want? Like me, I don't want more children. Eh, let God give children to some of you. I have retired from childbearing. And my wife has retired from labor room. So right behind your sheets, Five of those things you want God to do in your life, in your family. So all of you who are sitting, you can't give God 10,000 Naira in three months. 
that's that is it is that is scandalous that shows you don't love god that shows god has not been working in your life that shows heaven is closed against you ten thousand naira is no money this god can put it in your hand even tomorrow morning god can raise people who put money in your hand don't run away from the blessings of God. God has promised not to allow you to go through life empty-handed. No, you will not be borrowing from anybody. Can you please step up for 10,000? Step up for 15,000? Step up for 20? Test God and see whether he's faithful or not. Okay. I'm going to count five. If you are not here, will ask God to close that door. One and two. Two and three. I wish you could even sell your shoes and get 10,000. Okay, all those who can give 5,000, can you join them? I want your name to be listed among those who will bear the financial armor for this program. It is easy for me to call many of my friends overseas and say, come, come and sponsor the program. Hey, the blessings will go to them. Don't think the white points are idiots. Everywhere there is crisis, they will go there and take over the crisis. They know what God does for them. We will not continue to be stagnant rivers that do not flow out. Those who can give 5,000, join them. 5,000. 5,000. Okay, those who can give 1,000, don't come out, just stand up. Say to God, if in three months you cannot give God 1,000, why are you in Uyo? Leave Uyo and go to your village and start cassava farm. 1,000. Can you stand up for 1,000? Don't come out, just stand up and say, God, I'm here, but I'll give 1,000 in three months. No, those who can give 500 naira, stand up. Those who can give 100 naira, stand up. Those who can give 1 naira, stand up. If you can't give God 1 naira, then your case is an emergency. You are the mighty man in battle. Yeshua. You are the mighty man in battle, Jehovah Yahweh. You are the mighty man in battle, Eshuda. You are the mighty man in battle, glory to your name. You are the mighty man in battle, Eshuda. You are the mighty man in battle. Jehovah is right with you, right with you, right man, right man in battle. Eh, Shada, you are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. You are the mighty man in battle. Eh, Shada. You are the mighty man in battle, Jehovah Yahweh. You are the mighty man in battle, Yeshua. You are the mighty man in battle, glory to your name. You are the mighty man in battle, Yeshua. You are the mighty man in battle, King of the sea. You are the mighty man in battle, El Shaddai. You are the mighty man in battle, glory to your name.
mani matu Eshida Iwadi mighty mani matu Jehovah Yahweh Iwadi mighty mani matu Eshida Eshida Iwadi mighty mani matu Glory to your name. Can we all stand up? Let us take five minutes. Tell God that financial miracle you want Him to perform in your life, in your family. Let me make bold to include your village. Because some of you looking at me tonight in 10 years' time shall be pillars of your villages. Yeah. No, when I started this journey, I was nobody. I was driven away for telling the governor of Eastern Nigeria that I was, hey, don't do that, you girls. For telling the governor I'll be a preacher, my uncle almost killed me. As I was being driven away, my uncle said, Oh, man, you'll be nobody. No preacher. He said, All the born again people are dropouts, they're failures. You are going to be one of them. And I said, No, no, uncle, no, no, uncle. This small boy will be the pillar of our village. The man gave me another round of beating. Right where you are, as I speak now. Nobody can ignore me in my village. Nobody. And you are now next in line to have that kind of miracle in your life. They used to mock us. This is why when they made the Christian sister the vice chancellor of the University of Uyo, I, I asked them to close down the Meridian. Because people just said, no born again shall be anybody. And I said, it's not true. And God is doing it. It's amazing to have this governor say to me, hey, you are our mentor. I was amazed. Right where you are, if you're part of this service tonight, God has already put in, in progress a program that will make you somebody someday. And it starts this night. Because your captivity has been turned around. And whatever the name has taken from you shall be returned to you. Can each one take five good minutes? Tell God what you want Him to do for you in your, in your finances, your health, in your business, in your village. Don't forget that village. That's where God posted you as an ambassador. You cannot, you cannot be there and things be going wrong. Can we all pray? Wherever you are, just lift up your voice. David alone changed Israel. Esther, a woman, changed it, 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 the Jews. It's not your tongue. It's your tongue. But ask God to anoint you for greatness. Ask God to anoint you for greatness. You have access to the throne room. You have access to God's throne room. You are known in God's throne room. You are known in God's throne room. Talk to him.
in Jesus' name. Can you raise up your right hand and repeat after me? Say, I believe and confess that I am a candidate of multiplication, a candidate of greatness. This, the, the seed of greatness is already in me. And by this service tonight, it has been watered. I am grateful. I am ready for explosion. I am ready for growth. That voice that speaks against me, speaks against my progress, speaks against my multiplication, speaks against my good health, speaks against my righteous living. That voice, that voice, that voice shall speak no more, 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 speak no more. of Jericho the enemy built against your people even when you had commanded them to possess Jericho the enemy is an uncircumcised arrogant little giant by my spoken word I declare that wall of Jericho has collapsed It has collapsed. Everyone who is tortured in his or her dreams. Everyone who is harassed by mommy water spirit or marine spirit or snake spirit. I command. I command. From now henceforth. Those elements will not appear in your dreams anymore. Whatever Satan has stopped anyone's father or mother, he or she shall not be stopped there. Amen. Father, as we speak, the kingdom is looking for stars. And I declare that these are the stars of the kingdom. Amen. Father, there will be great leaders. Amen. There will be the pillars of their families. Pillars of the villages. Amen. For the beginning tonight, nobody shall ignore them anymore. Amen. At their parents, they will command attention. Amen. Everywhere they go, they will command attention. Amen. That for every this, every every limitation placed upon them is now dismantled. Amen. That sickness that refused to go has gone already, gone already, gone already. That 
barrenness that closed her womb has been destroyed completely and totally. <laughs> Father, you turn the captivity of Job around. Everyone facing any kind of captivity, any kind of confusion, Anyone who is standing at the middle road of life and does not know where to go and what to do. Everyone that has struggled to rise up but the force will not let him or her rise up. I demand that that captivity is now turned around. Yeah. Father, I demand that everyone here be, be be protected by you. As I go from here, no harm shall come their way. No attack, spiritual attack or physical attack, known for anyone here. You I had asked me at the beginning of the year to announce that this year shall be our year of 1,000 blessings. For now, we have not forgotten, because you have not forgotten, that for the miracle start this night. Grant your children greater understanding of your word. Grant your children prophetic, insightful, revolutionary knowledge of the word. And you say, those who know you shall do exploits. And therefore declare that each one here shall do exploits. Thank you, dear Father. Father, here is the key in my hand. The key to a shop, the key to a car, the key to a house, the key to a car. For all those who have not received their own miracles, let those miracles start this night. No member of this, of this family, of this, of this commission, shall age without a house and means of mobility. But I dedicate the car, I dedicate the house back to you. Father, protect these two items. They will bless and not harm. And every voice that speaks from them shall speak no more. Amen. It shall be so. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please drop your own pledge on the altar. And uh, Dr. Yanga, please make sure we articulate these things and put them together. And know those who pledge what. Pastor Joe, give us the son to take us back to our seats. To you, Lord, be all the glory. To you, Lord, be all the honor. To you, Lord, be all the glory. And adoration for the end of Lord. Jesus, to you, Lord, be all the To you, Lord, be all the honor. Let's 
can you stand up and raise your hand and declare and say, Father, by your inspiration, I declare myself the main man of my family. Say it loud, say it loud, say it loud. It's a prophetic pronouncement. Say it one more time, one more time. Raise your hand and declare one more time and say, The Lord has blessed me and I shall be a blessing everywhere I go. Next Wednesday shall be our communion service. And um, if you have not gotten your own cup, buy your cup. But please don't buy a bucket. Buy Holy Communion size cup. Can we take three minutes and thank the Lord for this night? As we call on Pastor Ketubu to come and dismiss us with a word of prayer. Choristers, we want to ask a member to attend the elders' meeting tomorrow. Youth leaders, we want to see you also at that meeting and hear your level of preparation. Can we all raise up our hand? Just thank the Lord for this night. And tell God you know that you know, like Esther, like David, you have become the main man of your family. And of your village, don't be afraid. God will take you there. Can we talk to God? Let him know you mean business. Let him know you trust him. Let him know you know he can do it for you. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look down the days of little things. Because very soon you will rise above that level. Shall we all pray? Talk to God. Huh? What? The last Wednesday, we have two children. The last Wednesday. Today. Why didn't your madam tell us? Madam, what happened? She doesn't feel me about it. Well, let's put it together for next Wednesday. Sorry. We hear uh, there were children brought for dedication. Um, we will do it next um, Wednesday. Are we allowed? Okay, what? No, don't say no. Hey, who is saying no? You must be a rebel. One more time. Just raise your hand and our pastor will come out and, and remember the, the main lesson of this night that you, you are that person God has been looking for in your family, in your own village, in your own clan. I don't care how young you are, God can raise you to that level. Can you raise up your right hand? Madam, raise your hand. Please tell the Lord, with you behind me, all things are possible. If God is on your side, you are unstoppable and unmolestable. Nobody, I don't care how many people are against you. They will not be able to scratch you. Raise your hand. We give you glory, glory and honor. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. Daddy will return all the glory to you tonight. For all you have done in our me, Lord, for making us the main man of our father's house. Lord, who have made us the head and not the tail. Father, the prophetic declaration will receive all of them in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare that they will begin to manifest even from now in the name of Jesus. Those who rejected us will celebrate us in the name of Jesus. Those who did not, who despised us, they will come begging. They will come running. They will say you must be in the family before the meeting will hold. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I know you have made us that if we are not there, the meeting will not hold in the name of Jesus. 
in our father's house we will be sought after in the name of Jesus and Lord we worship you for what your servant has uttered from this altar no power can change it in the name of Jesus the grace in fellowship now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore Amen <laughs>